So this is a quick demonstration of how to automate unit testing for PLSQL developers using Developer Cloud Service and uh, UT PLSQL, which is an open source project. Uh, they just released version 3.0, and, and if you actually go there, you can find out all the information you need. Um, I'm going to use basically from the documentation over here, if you look, there's a part that is called Getting Started, and it has a use case that explains the whole concept. Um, so this allows you to do test-driven development with PLSQL and what I'm going to show you is how it works. So I'm going to use SQL Developer and inside here I'm going to show you that I have two packages or actually one function. Okay, So this is the function, it's called between string. This is from the use case uh, in the getting started. And what it does is basically gets a string and a start position and an end position and returns the characters between the start and end position. Okay, So this is the code. Now what you want to do in test-driven development is actually have tests defined that test the functionality of your code. And this is what you have here in this package called the test between string. Okay, uh, There's some annotations here for the two functions okay, that describes what they do. And then inside here you have actually two procedures. Uh, one procedure is uh, checking a basic usage, so if you give this string with those values, uh, this is what you expect to get back. And then the other one um, is when you start from a zero position. Okay. So this is our code, okay. and what I want to show you is how we can automate the whole process of doing tests and running those using developer cloud service. So my code is inside a developer cloud service instance. I have a project here, and if you go into our code section here, I have a branch called UT test, and inside here I have um, these two files that I showed you before. Inside here, checked into my Git repository, so I can look at them from here. So I'm going to show you a demonstration of what is the normal flow of a developer day. So let's say, for example, that the developer looks at this code and thinks, okay, this is maybe too complex. I don't actually need to have a specific uh, check for a zero situation. So he just goes over and remove this piece of code over here, okay, from the function. And then he saves the function. Okay, so this would indicate that the function is now changed, okay, in the file. And what he's going to do, like a good developer is commit the code into our git repository and um, so we're going to say a uh, simplified the function okay for example and then he's going to push this code change into our git repository in oracle developer cloud service okay so we're working on a branch of our code, so we don't want to work on the main line of code. We're using the git flow idea here. Doing finish, this pushes the update to our cloud. So if you go back to our cloud environment now, okay, and if you look up here at the recent activity, you'll see this transaction. You can click on it, okay, and you can see the changes, the lines that were removed are in red now. Alright, so the nice thing is that the minute that I did this, we are actually going to see here in the build section, okay, let's re reload this page. Okay, there's a build that got queued for us. Okay, so this build called the UT user, which is now executing, while it's executing, I'm going to show you what it does. Okay. Um, so let's go into the configuration and in the build steps we're connecting to our database okay and then we're executing the creation of the function and then also uh, the creation of any test so those two scripts are going to run and they're going to create uh, the function and the tests in our database now after the build finishes in a post build we are going to start automatically another build job, which is called the unit test job. Okay, so this is what this build does. As we saw, it's right now executing. So let's wait for it to finish. Okay, 
Right, so the job just finished successfully. We can look at the uh, console to see basically that the code ran, packages were created. Let's go back to our build and we can see, oops, another one got queued automatically for us. And that's the unit test build. That's the build that is automatically invoked after we create our code. So let's look at the unit test and see what we're doing here. Okay, so in the build steps, we're using the SQL CL integration connecting to the database, and then we're executing okay, this command, okay, ut run, and we're providing to it a parameter that indicates that the results are going to be outputted into um, an JUnit compliant format. Now, what we are also doing here is we are spooling the results, this is this line, into a file called results.xml. Okay. So, when the build is executed, we are running our tests using this command and spooling the results into a file. Okay. Now let's look at what happens after the build. Okay. After the build, we have archiving of this file, the results.xml file that we created. And then we're going to publish the JUnit test results. Okay, so those are those entries. So let's see what happens to our build. Still executing, so let's wait for it to finish. Okay, and we can see that it finished with arrows in it. So let's click and see what's going on here. We're clicking on here, we can see the results that were um, archived. We can download and look at it. We can also look at the tests. Okay. If we click on the test, we can see that we ran two tests and one of them failed. Okay. If we click over here, we can see which one failed. Okay. And we can see that the start is zero failed because we were expecting to get one, two, three, four, five, and we got all the way to six. So probably the code change that we did wasn't the good code change to do. So let's go back into SQL Developer. Okay. Let's undo the changes that we did here. Like that. Save this. Okay. And again, check this code back into our repository. Like that. And then execute the push to the cloud. Right, once we pushed the code to the cloud, you already know what's going to happen. If we go back over to our page, we'll see that the new commit has been done. Okay, we go back to the build, we'll see that the UT user code has been queued. And I'm going to fast forward the video here uh, to show you what's going to happen next, which is this build, then the test results, and then we're going to see the test results. Okay, first build finished successfully, second build got queued. Okay, our second test now finished and now it looks successful. Let's go and look at the details. Okay, this is build 46. And we can look at the tests. We can see that we did two tests, nobody failed. We can drill down to see the details of the tests and notice that this one has been fixed now. In addition, you can look at the console and actually see the output from your SQL CL command. Okay, so this is actually running the execution of this. This is the result. Okay. And as we said, this is archived and you can now have a tracking mechanism to know exactly how your code is doing. So overall, well, this shows you a complete flow of how doing a change in the code 
automatically deploys it to the database, run tests, and let you know if things work or not. And this is DevOps for the Oracle database.